Lovers quarrel. It's a long sustained quarrel. What's going on, world? Hey, everybody. It's your guy, TJ, Mr. New Cool. And it's your girl, Danny, your well rested walrus. Because a nigga is on spring break. Boop! Ow! Yes. I don't think a walrus make any of those noises, but respect. Um, I really, I don't know if I could master the walrus sound, so I just, you know. Got you. I'm going to stay in my lane. How's your spring break been? Um, quite uneventful. Uh, you know, did a lot of, like, doctor's appointments, got a lot of, like, administrative things out of the way. Uh, you know, still being the mom, taking Tatum to daycare. But I Sounds definitely... Sounds eventful to me. Uh, I mean, I didn't do anything, like, traveling or partying or anything like that, but... You don't have to travel and party to be eventful. It's kind of... I feel like that's kind of, like, the definition like going to the doctor is not an event it's not like you know how many americans don't go to the doctor uh, yeah i do but i I also feel like that's not something celebratory i should say that but you know i think you being able to to go to the doctor and you know be able to make sure your health is good you gotta celebrate that celebrate all the wins no sorry that's not that's not that's not translating so I did what I was like, what I'm supposed to do as like an adult, you know, and uh, and you know, also just getting ready for uh, Tatum's party, and that's facts. I got you know a nap or two in exactly four twenty. Yeah. So we're gonna have a four twenty party. <laughs> yes, we no. are, because that was the only available date. But and I'm giving all the kids edibles. Don't say that. What they call the people on us? Get all the kids edibles. No, he's we not. Little high, little high kids. No, we're not doing that. But Tatum has the cutest little bathing suit. Yeah, she was very excited about this. I am. It's like a little baby shark. It's got a little tail. <laughs> I'm so excited. But um, yeah, so that's who I am. And welcome to another episode of A Lover's Quarrel. If this is your first time listening with us. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. If this is your second to infinity time listening to us welcome back and we appreciate you tuning in with us for another week i uh, promise i won't cry on this episode so uh I mean, let them see who you are you know I, that's, what the, that's what the podcast is about it's about it us being transparent with our lovers it is so yeah so what's going on with you i guess we can jump on this elevator uh is benson still uh, running your elevator yeah. Was it Jeeves or nah, Fonsworth? It's, it's still Benson. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. How are you doing today? Oh my God. Who's going first? Me or you? You can go. Okay. <clears throat> going. No. You can go first on my elevator. I. I okay. So you don't got to do the noise because I'm good. My man Benson got you. Oh, all right. Hello, I, ma'am. Mm hmm. Please take a seat on this nice plush couch. Mm hmm. Are we going up or down? Uh, that was me pressing the button. <laughs> I'm glad you're tickled by this shit. I am. <laughs> okay. You, are you make you don't no. yours don't make no noise. I can just start talking. You can start talking. So y'all. Hold on before you go. So, uh, see, <laughs> because the difference is, I'm giving you all the nice stuff. You don't get no voice. You, I'll be whereas, with this. whereas yes. when I go inside your joint, I get the great voice. Trash elevator. But. Are you sure? Can I? Go ahead. I can proceed. Okay, so y'all, again, if you, especially if you've been like a listener for any extent of time, you know that one of the biggest themes of anything I say or do has to be with how exhausted I am because of, in part because of grad school. Well, I'm happy to report that as of this episode dropping, I have successfully submitted my portfolio for review. And prayerfully and hopefully, and I'm claiming it that I will pass and I will be graduating with my master's in uh, secondary educational studies from Johns Hopkins University on May 22nd at 9 a.m. So, you know, now I just have to play the waiting game for I, so I can get my scores back. But I put my, you know, of course, it came down to the wire like always. I wouldn't be me if I didn't have it. At the 11th hour, but I turned it in. I definitely did the very best I fucking could. So, I'm just 
but at least now like there's nothing else for me to do i literally didn't even know what to do with myself like the next day when i woke up tuesday and i knew that i didn't have any like work to submit or web like the format the website or anything like that i like legit almost had like a, a, almost like an anxiety attack because i'm like it's been three years of me always having something to do and i didn't have anything to do and it felt strange quite honestly but I'm just glad to be done with that. And then I'm still going up. I'm going up to another floor, Benson. And on that floor, Beyonce, enough said. Beyonce. She dropped Homecoming on Netflix. She dropped the live album from the from Coachella. And as always, she never disappoints. She's all like, you know, and this one was a lot more just of the show itself because obviously there was no real place for you to get it from. But you also, she had the cuts in between when she talked about the preparation. Excuse me. We got to see the twins. We got to see Blue Ivy. We got to see Jay-Z. And what, and like, I'm like, I'm not, like, I always like to think of myself as beehive adjacent. No, you're part of the beehive. No, because I don't put like bees and lemons and stuff like that under people's comments when they say stupid shit about Beyonce. But I am somebody who, she will always get my money. She will always get my support. Um, And... What I will say about it is, like, I really, really appreciated, like, as as she gets older and I get older, the, like, the transparency that she talks about as a woman, as a wife, as a mother. It's like, I can respect it. I can appreciate it. Like, she talked about having to have a C-section with the, the twins. and Did you cry on that part? No, I didn't cry, but okay. I, I identify with it when she talked about, like, her body not feeling like it was herself. Like, she didn't feel like her, she, didn't, like, trying to readjust to her, her body after all the changes that she had been through and also like how she didn't feel like herself and how she had you know pushed herself so hard and was working so hard and then has to go home to her kids and still has to breastfeed and this and that and like I, I identify with that and I, you know and I'll say this and it's kind of been kind of floating around like social media and stuff but when people even though I haven't heard anybody directly say it Beyonce's work ethic you could feel how you want about her music, about whatever. Her work ethic is unparalleled and unmatched. Like, there is nobody in the entertainment industry, and arguably in other industries too, that works as hard as her. Like, definitely the entertainment industry. Like, she she talked about, like, she's like, you have to be uncomfortable. And I took that too. That's like a gem. Like, you got to be uncomfortable with like looking funny and looking stupid and looking weird and not being perfect at something because you have to get better at it. And um and she when she was referring to like all the different components that came together to make the show and how she had to kind of like be okay with like not getting the steps as fast as she did in the past but still working at it. But like her work ethic is just it's un- it's unmatched. Like I I can't Kobe Bryant will outwork her. I I disagree. Mama mentality, baby. She might. They might share the same Mamas mentality. Eat bees. That's the no. They do. And I'm going to say this: they might share the quote unquote mamba mentality, but if she shares it, she got it from him. <laughs> Therefore, no. Listen, there's only it's one a, mamba, baby. There is only one mamba. Only but, one he, mamba. but he only has to be good at basketball. She has to coordinate oh my dancing, singing. He had music, to be good on his feet. The he musicality. Had to, he, what? The arrangement. Do you understand that he tore his Achilles? Yeah, I do. And he's and, and he, he had is, two free throws and, and has, walked off on his own merit. And he has a, do you know? And he has you know an the, unparalleled work ethic as a basketball player. But warfare I, you have to have in I, your mind to be able to accomplish these things. Do you I'm not know? taking nothing away from Beyonce. Okay, I'm not but doing you, that. you know because you did. You just said Kobe's was more. Work ethic I'm just saying. You're better. saying. You're and saying a that work ethic than Beyonce, and I disagree. You're saying that she has the the best in the world. I said in the entertainment industry and arguably other industries as well. Okay, that's what I said. You said it, but then you also said, "Never mind." And you said they Kobe, go back. You said Kobe. Kobe. You said Kobe was better, and I said they might share that same type of Mamba mentality. Oh, I'm taking but Kobe over. I, I but let me Kobe see. Let me see her let and me have see, two babies. Let me see her and have. Let me see her have to lose. What did she say? She the day she gave birth to the twins, she weighed two hundred and eighteen pounds. She had to lose all of that weight, 
You I'm ne- not taking that away Kobe from ain't her. never had no C-section. Let me see her roll her ankle and keep going. Actually, no. That's that's too easy. Because she would keep going. Let me see her tear her, her Achilles. And she would keep going. And just keep rocking. She would keep going. Okay. She would have posted up on one of them risers and still said her definitely a part of the beehive. It's cool. Beehive adjacent. No, nah, nah, you're beehive. It was an amazing performance. It was a great documentary. I'm going to have to watch it by myself because you watched it without me. So I did. I couldn't wait. I'm sorry. Yeah. But that's my elevator. That's marriage. It's not marriage. Mm, that's something just, like it. That's just my love for Beyonce. That's all. Your love for Beyonce is more important than your marriage. It's not. I mean, you could have waited. We could have watched it together. We could have... Yeah, but I, sometimes I watch it again with you. I, sometimes you just got to experience things by yourself. Because exactly. It's just I'm, like, I'm experiencing it by myself. Okay, that's and fine. You go back to school. I mean, back to work next week. Mm-hmm. And I'm home. I'm up. I'm going to sit down in my own abode. Mm-hmm. And me and Beyonce, we're going to get connected. I'm going to see her work ethic. And I bet you you'll speak, be singing a different tune. No, I like Beyonce. She's cool. She's amazing. She's cool. Okay, Benson. What about... Uh, TJ's elevator. Where is that going? Um, ma'am, are you are you finished? I am finished. I've gotten off the elevator. I'm on the penthouse. I talked uh, about Beyonce. Okay. Well, you you have a great day. Thank you for riding this beautiful elevator. Peace out. Let's go up. Oh, oh you're my elevator now? Yeah, I'm your janky elevator. Going up. Is that piss on the floor? Yeah, you know. You got like the project elevators. Anyway. You got a lot of nerve. Up. Listen, basketball, it's playoffs, and it's getting crazy. Is it? Yo. What's happening? So right now, Brooklyn Nets is 1-1 with 76ers. They had an upset, but then they came back. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's about to be a real dog fight. Milwaukee's destroying, um, what is this team? Detroit. Mm-hmm. Rockets is beating Utah. Um, OKC versus Portland, and and this is going because Dame is going at Russell's neck. Like who's Dame? Is that Dame the Dollar? Dame is that the, like he's kind of like short? Yeah, he's a, yeah. He wears number zero. He's actually pretty un- underrated. He's like a really good player, but he's underrated. But Dame is going at Adam. Um, what other teams am I missing? What about Golden State? Golden State. They lost to the Clippers. They were up by 31, and they lost. I don't know. I mean, they play tonight, so I don't know how that's going to go, but the Clippers have nothing to lose. The Clippers is really kind of showing the NBA, like, yo, we ready. We need one star. Who's coming? Mm-hmm. Because they literally have just, like, role players. So they just I know need somebody. about basketball, but. I know what a role player is. Okay. So- Who else? I know Honestly. they always get way more aggressive and like aggy when they're in the playoffs. So now everybody wants to like throw oh. bows and push people. Yeah, it's been bows. People getting ejected. Who got ejected? Um, Patrick Beverly and Ke- and Kevin Durant for what? Because he didn't brush his hair. So <laughs> you're out of control. <laughs> Patrick Beverly is like a pass on defense, and a lot of players don't like him. They consider him like a dirty player. Oh, but he's like, like um, Draymond Green, Draymond Green. Draymond, well, Draymond Green had a little kick issue, but yeah. Um, who else? So it's just been Denver there. and Utah. I mean, no, Denver and San Antonio. So it's but been like entertaining. Like, yeah, I mean, I can do without that game. I don't really care about Denver or, or San Antonio. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to think: Am I missing anybody? But you've been like wildly entertained with the yeah, playoffs yeah. so far. It yeah. just started though, right? Yeah, I mean, only like what three games in? It's like it's still round one, right? Boston and Indiana is playing. That's been pretty decent. So, who's um, been like? What's been like the most in, in entertaining, interesting matchup? If I had to pick, I'm gonna say the um, OKC in Portland and that Golden State in Clippers. That's pretty. It's been pretty interesting. Is it true what they said about Steph Curry where they said that he just now got contacts? Supposedly, yeah. But I mean that's not really playoff related, but yeah. I know. But I was just saying though, like they like all the time he's been shooting and he couldn't even see clearly. That's how you know he you know what I mean? And he's one of the goats. He got one of he got one of a, a finals MVP to be considered one of the goats. But he's won like a bunch of He won regular season MVPs. Never Why? Won, never won a final MVP. But what is the difference? 
That means that you were the best in the finals. So that that has to happen for you to be a GOAT? It's very rarely that someone wins the MVP of the season and then they go into playoffs and win a championship and they're not the finals MVP. And that's happened to him? Twice, back to back. Did it happen to LeBron? No. Okay, yeah. You make a good point because you know LeBron is the best to me. So I'm glad that you're enjoying the, the NBA playoffs and that there's so much to talk about. And then on my, you know, world news. Oh. Well, not really world news. And news. Okay. Aunt Becky and her husband pled not guilty. And I'm excited about watching this. They're going to ride that white privilege <laughs> all the way to the end. They're like, they like, no. Nope, Aunt not. Becky thought they were playing. And she... So I'm I'm excited to see what's gonna happen. How's this gonna play out? You think they're gonna go to jail? Hell yeah! I don't know. I think they're gonna throw the book at them they were because like, because because they being bold because they gave them the offer. Listen, like we tried to be nice. Yeah, and and they told them, listen, you 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 take the guilty. This is gonna get these wrist. charges because Felicity Huffman might get like zero to six months or something like that. Like, yeah, and then even then might be like. And they said oh. that once that deadline passed, they said okay more charges mm-hmm. so now even if they plead guilty it's going to be for a longer sentence so what's that what what movie is that with the was like the big black man and he's in the <laughs> interrogation room and he's like you know you even fucked up um minister society that's what i think about that when somebody's in the room with them like you know you don't fuck you know you fuck that right exactly <laughs> so i'm i'm excited it's gonna be like popcorn, watching it like in the exactly all the memes of like just watching. Yeah, exactly. I'm just watching them. To just, I I just want to see how it plays out because now they're saying like she's like like she didn't think that it was gonna be this serious and now, she was being white. Yeah. That's what she was. So. She was she was exercising her privilege. Like oh, this can't be that serious. This and the other. And that's now she maybe she'll realize it. It's a, one of the daughters can't like deleted their Instagram. The part with the Olivia Jade, that's the one that was like... The, the Whoever one. the famous one is, I think Olivia, she's Olivia she's still Jade. got her shit. She got to keep her, you know. And she's like, oh yeah, my name's OJ, and all that stuff like that. OJ! <laughs> my only thing with it is like, how don't you know what your parents are doing? Like, I mean... Could you imagine your mother saying, hey Danny, we're going to come out here and I want you to take pictures... Oh as, yeah, as if, no. That's as if you were rowing. You're right. In that situation, like that, that's like idiocy. Like that's just. How did you? Like I'm not on crew. Like, like because I think Felicity Huffman, her kids didn't know, but she didn't do all that other stuff. Like she, she said, she said Felicity this, Huffman took accountability. This is perfect. Oh, okay. Got to take accountability. Accountability is very important. Absolutely. I'm just saying. So she. So yeah. The daughters definitely like knew how to know something. I mean. The, Plus, you had to be like my grades weren't whatever like. But that's but that is white privilege. Is thinking that, that is thinking that it's acceptable to do that because because you can because you can or because everyone else is doing it or because you don't think you'll get caught and you know and then there's people out here white or not white like that earn their spots and My they got taken. Always said if something seems too good to be true, you don't want it. Mm, so that could be a thing. That's it. Can we get off of this janky elevator? Yeah, we can. Goodbye. No, your voice supposed to be nicer. Goodbye. Thank you. I can't stand your ass. All right, so now it's time for the relationship tip of the week. Um, I am going to go first, and I'm going to ask. And this one is simple but tried and true. And hopefully I haven't said it before, but I feel like it was almost so right in front of my face that I can't believe I didn't say it before. So hopefully it's not a repeat. But the tip of the week is simply say sorry. I'm pretty sure you said that already. I have? Yeah. This sounds familiar? Yeah, it does. Oh. I don't know which episode, but because of that, I automatically win. Really? Well, what's your tip? Be original. Oh, <laughs> we throwing shots, my nigga. <laughs> We throwing shots. That was the easy one, you know? Just be original. Okay. It's fine, because you know what? I know that I've been kind of getting at you and jabbing you like, this whole week with some of my uh, on-time jokes. So, I'll take it. doesn't matter what you do in Off practice. the air. It's about what you do in the game. Okay. And so, how... And, and you would know that because... Because we're doing it in the game, like... The game's right now. So you, oh, this is the game, yeah. not the game of like basketball, because no. you don't you don't do that. 
get you're reaching right now. Am I? You are. When's the last time you hooped? It's been some time, Denny. Hey. But that doesn't mean I'm not a hooper. We're not gonna do that. It doesn't. I mean, well, you find somebody that I that you want me to play against. I mean, last time you stepped foot on the court, you came off with a gap <laughs> with, <laughs> with a bum eye. So I'm just uh, you really shooting right now. I'm just saying. That's cool. I can still like it's just now kind of healing. That's crazy to me. But I still love you. Nah, you coming for my neck? No, I'm coming for your eye. Damn. But I'm sorry. See how that works. Great time. Thank you. With that, I yield. Uh, sir, do you have a uh, word of the week for us? Can you in? Because I know that that's on deck. I would love to switch it up and you know do something to jab at you. When we a bigger person, I'm just going to go into the word. Thank you so for this your benevolence. Week is going to be miser. Mm. A person who hoards wealth and spend as little as possible. Oh, okay. So, like the heat miser. Yeah, or like um, Scrooge McDuck. Oh yeah, duck tails, do do. Like and with that, we are going to go oh, to our gonna, break. Just gonna cut off my my little. From our sponsor. Oh, okay, so I'm just not here. All right, go ahead. Hey friend, it's time for you to ditch those workout gloves and get the grip and wrist support you deserve. What do you suggest? You need to get the Gaines Load and Lock Grips by Gaines Sports Gear. They are more durable than gloves, have a non-slip grip pad that provides grip support and added wrist support unlike your traditional workout gloves and will protect your hands from calluses. Do they come in different colors? Not only do they come in different colors, but they are available for men and women. Do yourself a favor. Go to gainsportsgear.com. And remember, a better grip equals a better lift. Embrace the process. And you too can embrace the process by using our code LOVERS10 at Gaines, G A I N Z sportsgear.com. And now, back to the episode. Now, I know you had just heard that message from our sponsor. Listen, they were on Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they were. IG yesterday. And I'm saying yesterday because when you hear this, it's going to have happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. So listen, make sure y'all use our code. Lovers you know, 10. And, 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 you know, you can be a part of the process early. Like, because once it blows up, I don't want y'all to come back to us and be like, hey, I remember when y'all used to talk about them. Yeah. We were telling you, we were trying to put y'all on game first. Get in there. You know what I mean? So I'm just, you know, happy that, you know. This great company is, you know, was willing to take a chance with us and sponsor us. And, you know, I I'm happy to see them continue to grow. They're at like seven schools. Oh, wow. I know that um, Bowie, Bowie State University, um, the athletic department uses their their accessories. So, you know, just so dope. continue looking into gain sports gear and then follow them. And, 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 you know, again, use our code and, you know. Embrace the process. Get in there. You want to get in at the ground floor. So. So I think that that's so dope and I'm appreciative because they've always been riding with us from the, the very beginning. Um, can I uh, chime in for a second? And I feel like you cut me off prior to our sponsor and I feel some type of way and I feel like you owe me some type of reparations for that. Um, can I please sing the uh, DuckTales theme song now? No. Please. Please no. Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Race cars, lasers, airplanes. It's a duck blur. Might solve a mystery or rewrite history. A duck tales, woo hoo. Every day they're out there making duck tales, woo hoo. Thank you. I feel better. I feel. Don't Might cut this. Just wasted more time. Don't cut it out the episode. I mean, I don't really cut anything out, so be great. I'm just, I'm, I'm, pr I'm promising you, somebody who listens, they may appreciate it. They're gonna appreciate it, and I just took them back to their childhood. I had a Ducktales uh, duffel bag mm -hmm. that I, um, I used when I told my mother I was running away from home because I was sick of her shit, and I packed three Barbies and three shirts. 
and about two pairs of underwear. And I called my aunt and I told her to come get me. <laughs> Did your aunt come get you? Hell no, she didn't come get me. Your she was all the way. Your aunt's trash. She was all the way on Long Island. I was in Queens. Your she aunt's was like, trash. No, they're not. Your aunt is trash. And how is it really running away if I'm telling somebody to come get me and bring me someplace so they know where I am? But I definitely stood at the front door waiting. I if opened Tatum out. called Shayla and said, come get me. Is Shayla coming? Probably. Not pro- if If Tatum called Shayla and said, I'm running away, I need you to come get me. Shayla's coming. It depends. Shayla's coming. It depends because if it depends on what happened. I didn't say Shayla was coming to take her. I say Shayla's going to come. She's going to show up. She might show up and then she's going to be like, why are you disrespecting my sister? Yeah, she's going to show. All I'm saying is that Shayla is going to show up for her for her niece. So I can I would bet my life. I know she would. That's what I'm saying. Your aunt trash. No, don't do that. I didn't say your aunt. I said your aunt. Whichever one you called. Don't do that because my aunt is not trash. Should have called the other one. No, <laughs> I called the one who I wanted to come get me. Okay. Because so you picked your favorite aunt. No, I picked the aunt. <laughs> I picked the aunt with the pool in the backyard. Picked your favorite aunt. Okay. So I picked. No, we're not gonna do that. I can see a young Danny right now grabbing her stuff and saying, "Okay, which I'm gonna go to." I want the aunt that has a pool in the backyard. I was six. Got you. That was that was the logic I had. Gotcha. Because we're not going to put me on the spot talk about who I got a favorite aunt and like that. You got mad aunts. Which one's your favorite? They're all my favorite. Uh-huh. I'd have called all of them. They all would have been there. Mm-hmm. All of them. They were half of them lived in the same building as you, so that was, that was probably Whatever. just Exactly. I, so I'd have just laughed. Knock on the door. Like, I'm here. <laughs> Listen. So, uh, on this episode, we found out that got favorite aunt that's not true. don't do that don't <laughs> and, do that you know your other and your aunt ain't coming for you so, because, you so you so you sat at the door i opened the front door and i <laughs> still was looking out the storm door i was just for waiting probably like a half hour till i got tired and your aunt didn't come but i had my ducktails duffel bag it was blue and, and your aunt didn't it come. had canvas straps you picked your favorite aunt and, and i was come. like i didn't say that i said i picked the aunt who I thought would A come and B Listen, had a pool in the backyard. And you picked your favorite aunt. That's, I, and I say. All I heard was my favorite aunt had a pool in the backyard. That's, that's all I heard. That's, not what that's I all I heard. Said. And she didn't show up. She left you like, you know, it was like somebody calling their parent and like waiting for their Athenian father, you know? It wasn't that bad. I was just upset at my mother. Out there for I heard, 30 minutes. I don't remember what my mother said or did. She probably what? told me. She like, probably laughed at you. She, she did. She, they let me. Her and my father let me stay in there looking like a fool. They were like, she'll get over it. She, I probably let Tatum stand at the door too and be like, but Tatum would probably leave. Shayla's coming. That's what I'm saying. Shayla probably would come. But no, then Shayla might like saying, her. You keep saying probably Shayla's coming. It's just whether about what she's going to do when she gets here. I didn't say that she was going to take her. All I said was that Shayla was going to come. Okay. If, if her... If Tatum called Shayla, Shayla's coming. All right, we can FaceTime her after the episode and, and ask. Her I too. bet every dollar. I, I don't. I don't disagree with you. You said possible. You said she. You said that she possibly may come. I'm telling you, I'm betting. All right. I I'm, bet my life on it. Okay. You ever you, you ever used to do that as a kid? Bet your life. Yeah, like or or you know like swear swear on your life. Ah, probably. I don't know. I'm just. Reminiscing with uh, the ducktails. All right. Um, do we have any lover mail? We do actually. Um, the lover mail, which still sounds so weird. Um, it's from a a female listener. Uh, she says, "I have friends who I argue with." That on one level they state that they want a soulmate and they want to be married. But on the other hand, they go after the quote unquote hood type man with money or the good type with money. I'm guessing, you know, it's basically about the monetary point. I tell them that if you're seeking a lifestyle, you have to understand what is behind that door. So my question is, should they be mad at me for calling them prostitutes yes yes i mean if you're chasing the bag what's the difference right love the show guys yes your friends should be mad at you for calling them prostitutes i am not surprised that your friends don't try to beat your ass for calling them prostitutes because that or curse let me back up 
curse you out for calling them prostitutes. That's wrong. Like, if those are your friends, like, you don't have to agree with what they're doing, but you don't necessarily have to call them prostitutes because I don't see there's not, that's not equating to me. Yeah, I I don't think it equates. Prostitution is like, I'm selling the practice or occupation of engaging in sexual activity with someone for payment. But if you're looking for, if you have a type, it may just be a shallow. I would say your friend is shallow because they're looking for someone with money or they're looking for... Well, yeah, based off what you said, they're looking for someone with money and they can be hood or regular, but they need to have money. Mm. Um, and there's more to life than that. There is more to life than that. But and then my thing, though, too, is like, well, what? who says that they don't? Why can't they want their soulmate to be someone with that also has like financial security? Like there's they like, isn't that kind of the ideal situation? Like you find someone that you are in love with and that's your soulmate, but that also, too, like on paper, and in like as far as how life runs is also financially secure. Like isn't that yes the best no. of both worlds? Yes or no? Because mm-hmm. what if you are financially secure and you don't really need you don't you don't need nobody else's money? You are just looking for love. I mean that's true. So I don't I don't think that money is going to equate. Now listen, if that's your preference, that's your preference. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think anybody can knock you for what your preference is. Mm-hmm. You know, if you only like tall guys. And the tall guys treat you like shit, and the small and the short guys treat you like like a queen. But because that's your preference, that's your preference. Like you gotta you gotta take your wins and your losses. So, you know, I think you can have your preference, but that doesn't make you, you a prostitute. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, I think prostitute is the wrong word. Does it make you shallow? Yes, it makes mm-hmm. you very shallow. Because but, you know you can have money, but if you have money, he beats the shit out of you, or if he has money in cheats on you all the time like are you going to be there through that all like yeah. if the money is the only thing that you're there for then cool but if you want someone who you can love and trust and you know and they're not going to give you that but they have the other option like you know what i mean yeah. i think i also think it's like as a society we think we know what we want uh-huh. and we really don't okay because we allow like outside factors. We allow like our friends, our family, things we've seen, things we've heard kind of cloud our judgment. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, you know, there may be a good person, but your friends was like, nah, he doesn't, he or she doesn't look good. So you mm-hmm. like, I'm not going to talk to them cause I, because I don't want to be the joke or whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who's, who probably had someone that they liked and they didn't pursue it further because they were worried about how they would be perceived. Yeah. yeah. So And I think I think that there's like you said, like it might be it, it, the perception could be that it's shallow or the perception could be that it's just, that there is you're being realistic like everybody's preference, everybody's expectations for what they want in a relationship are theirs. Now, are some more realistic than others? Yes. But you you can't shade, you can't like condemn somebody for saying like, I don't want to be with somebody who doesn't have some semblance of financial security. Now, what that might look like could vary from person to person. So one person's financial security means that you're gainfully employed and you can cover all your bills and you can afford to like go on, like for us to go away on a trip once or twice a year. Other people, it means that this person has to be making six figures and they have to have two homes and a vacation home. And like, it varies. Now, does the level of shallowness range in that situation? Yes. But does it make a person a prostitute that they're exchanging one type of a serve like a sex for for financial uh, gain? That does not make them a prostitute. And like your friends should be arguably pissed at you for suggesting that because it's not just chasing the bag. It's not that. And then they can, and then these, and these women, these things are not mutually exclusive. You can still want a soulmate in marriage and then you can but still be attracted to a certain type. And sometimes, you know, though, and yeah, and even though sometimes looking your soulmate or the person that you want to marry may not necessarily fit into the mold of the type of man or woman that you're typically attracted to, or that has that typical, you know, financial stability or status, 
but it doesn't mean that like you can't be looking for both because that's what isn't that what dating is it's like you're going sometimes you're going through the motions and then sometimes you're dating with a purpose you're dating to find that person that you want to spend your life with but it doesn't mean that like there's anything wrong with you also dating people who you can have fun with i think too like it, it but it definitely it definitely doesn't make you a prostitute and it may it and and i would strongly suggest to this listener that to like be mindful of your words when you f- speak to your friends in the future as my wife says words mean things they absolutely do so and that's what i'm saying like i'm surprised your friends haven't cur- if they haven't already they've probably cursed you out for saying that to them because like and if and honestly though and if that if the way if what your friends are doing or how they what their preferences are don't align with your beliefs or your moral you know stand then maybe you shouldn't be friends with them because it doesn't it doesn't what they're doing isn't necessarily wrong it just may not vibe with you and that's right that's fair and you don't have to agree with it you don't have to like it but instead of calling them names then you maybe you just need to distance yourself because if that's what they want to do or what... or i mean if you're going to call them names I, w- I would use the proper names but to say someone's a prostitute and they're not selling themselves for money that's not prostitution i mean again there's people out there who think that you know Boyfriend and girlfriends, that's like prostitution because if if the man buys you a gift, then y'all gonna have sex. So that's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, people and people are stretching it with yeah, that. Yeah, I'm just saying, but yeah. th- th- there are people who who think that way. So I would just, you know, everything Danny said, I I agree with, but I, I would just choose my words better. Cause, Thank you, baby. Yeah, words mean things. That they do. So take that which take what you will from that. Do better. Speak to your friends with a little bit more respect. And you know, don't get mad because they're chasing a bag or they're just they have standards that don't align with your own. So that's all I have to say about that. And I don't have a favorite aunt. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you want to make sure you put it put that back in? I I, I need to reiterate that. You do have a favorite aunt. The one with the pool. Shut the hell up. You said it. Not I, I did not. You did say it. So listen. When we talked about R. Kelly. Oh. Going right? there. And you know everybody was. Yeah. So Harvey Weinstein is about to do his trial. Mm-hmm. And you know. This is what people have been asking for. You know. Keep the same energy. Mm-hmm. KTSE. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. They're talking that both the prosecution and the def- and a defense mm-hmm. wants no media allowed. Okay. How do you feel about that? Do they give any logic behind it? I mean, I, I get why the defense wouldn't want it. I'm surprised at the prosecution. They said that they don't want the... They do not want the, um, like the jurors to be like... Swayed or influence. Um, I mean, I guess to an extent I can respect it because you want it to be as unbiased as well. You want you want them to be as impartial as possible when coming to their conclusion. And being that this entire case or the facts of the case leading up to it have been and very it was public about the the women, sorry. To give them privacy. Yeah. Then I can I can respect it. Like I can because ultimately, like it's not it's not. I guess I can respect it because it's not. It seems like it's not about protecting Harvey Weinstein's privacy. It's about respecting the privacy of the the alleged victims. But I feel like if you do that, then do it for everybody. They didn't do that for for, for Bill Cosby. They didn't. But every situation. I mean, I, I'm just saying. Why? I feel like they don't want it because they don't want people to know. And I mean, that could be part of it. That could be the benefit for the defense. But if, if that's the case, then settle out. Plead guilty and, and then settle it out. Like, once you go to court, it's supposed to be it's, it's supposed to be allowed for, for the public. Well, it becomes a matter of public record, but it doesn't mean that they have to be in the court for the duration of the trial. The think, outcome of the trial. I don't think the discussed. public... Okay. After the fact becomes a... a so if you want to pr- protect the women, cool. The public can't be there. But... Why can't the media outlets be there? Because then they would, they would depict the women. They would, I mean, they could they could pixelate their faces. They could do whatever, but 
then maybe that's the issue. Like they, they, they I mean, it's still you're, they're still being put on on front street. And who's to say that some of the women that aren't that have to testify aren't also famous? I mean, some we might know of, some we might not. But it's still like. I can see it, but I also, but I also get what you're saying too. Like, I don't want to necessarily, I'm not trying to protect Harvey Weinstein. It's, it's just like, but if the overwhelming majority of women who they would want to call aren't comfortable with the idea of their names or their faces or their likeness being out in public and their testimony is going to put him away, is going to like help their case, then I'm going to do as if I'm the defense attorney, no, if I'm, excuse me, if I'm the prosecution, I'm going to do what I can to like accommodate my witnesses i just feel like i feel like once you start doing like i feel like there is other motives behind it on both sides but i mean there's definitely probably a, a, a huge a dollop of white privilege in this too and for that i think that's the reason why we should be able to see it we should be able to see the, the sketch artists and, and and see everything that they do and and you know if if Harvey Weinstein laughs funny when he's walking out of court or do something, you know, what I mean? like I just feel like the same coverage Bill got, it should be the same coverage. And I get it. I just I was just kind of baffled because I never knew that you could say we don't want. I mean, a lot. Of, there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of cases. I mean, high well, profile ones where there aren't there aren't any media allowed because they don't want it to be. A, a media circus as for what for lack of a better term because they don't want people like you know every second that of the of the entire tribe people are like cameras and faces and stuff like that so it happens often it's just it depends on the judge and it depends it depends on who's asking and what the the logic behind it is and in this case let's for for argument's sake the logic behind it is sound but even though it helps accommodate or protect the victims it also unintentionally helps Weinstein, which isn't ideal, but sometimes that's what happens. But I think what's ultimately most important is that the case is tried and he's found guilty of whatever it is that he might be guilty of, which is probably a good amount of things being that of all, because of all the stuff that has come out because he basically was the smoking gun that triggered the Me Too movement. So... You know, as long as he gets his comeuppance, I don't really care if there's no cameras or all the cameras in there. I just as long as justice is served, that's all. So on that note, this is typically where we would go into our quarrel. Mm-hmm. But again, by being true and honest and transparent. And forthright. We don't really have a quarrel. No. So I wanted to take the time to do something different. What's I that? wanted to tell Danny... Uh-huh. And my lovers, how much I appreciate Danny. Um, seeing everything that she's done these last few years, uh, well, you know, with being in school, being a mother, um, and you know, loving her profession, doing everything she can for her students, and then you know, having a come back to be a mother, and then you know, getting up early in the morning, getting Tatum ready to go to school. Just seeing everything that she does, I'm so thankful for her. Um, and even when me and her are beefing or whatever, she still loves me the same. Um, and and it means a lot to have someone so strong and powerful beside you. So because we don't have a quarrel, I figured let me say some, some, some kind words. That's so sweet. So I appreciate you and thank you for everything that you do. She, she even make time to make sure we record, even though I know she may be tired or, you know, she's got other things going on. So um, I appreciate you and I love you. Thank you, baby. I appreciate you and I love you. And this one, I wouldn't be able to have gotten to this point if it wasn't for you too, because I know that so many times that our quality time together gets got pushed to the side, to the back burner and you had to kind of suck it up and, and deal with it. And even though sometimes it was frustrating for you, like, I really, really, really appreciate you, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, being in my corner and, you know, helping me and, you know, pushing me sometimes and calling me out sometimes when I needed to, because 
it would, you know, it, it just doesn't work if it's not you by my side. So I thank you and I appreciate all that you have done for me and I love you. So on that, guys, we're going to close this episode out. Mm-hmm. This has been yet another episode of Lovers Quarrel. Um, okay. You can follow us on IG at Lovers Quarrel Show. Mm-hmm. You can follow us on Twitter at Lovers Quarrel 7. You yep. can send us emails at Lovers Quarrel Show at gmail.com. Sure and can. please don't forget to, you know, rate us. Like, share, tag, follow. Yeah, there you go. You do it so much better. Um, <laughs> Again, we appreciate y'all for um, taking the time out of your, your schedule to listen to us talk, talk our shit. And, you know, um, it, it means a lot to us. So thank you. And you know what? As always, we fuss. We fight. But, but we, we love. love. Bye. Bye. I'm going to get some cutty tonight. I think so. Oh, shit. <laughs> Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.